In this video, we're going to look at the adiabatic expansion of an ideal gas. So the type of process that we're looking at is uh, looking at a gas that's initially compressed at some initial conditions P1, V1, and T1, right? This is our standard container with, uh, with gas particles on the inside and a movable piston that we can use to change the volume. Uh, if you expand it, right, you're basically moving that piston up and allowing more room for the gas uh, to move around. And so that's going to change your system to a pressure P2, uh, volume V2, and a temperature T2. Now, what does it mean when we talk about this word adiabatic, right? That's the only word that's really new here, right? Uh, adiabatic just means that there's uh, the system is set up in such a way that there's no heat transfer to or from the system. So for an adiabatic expansion, that means that dq is going to be equal to zero, right? There's no heat transferring to or from our system, right? So now what does that, um, what does the pressure volume relationship look like for an adiabatic uh, ideal gas? Well, the general trend looks very similar to an, an ideal gas. Now, what would this look like compared to an isothermal gas? Well, what it would look like is the iso isothermal gas would be a little bit higher uh, as far as its uh, pressure volume relationship than the adiabatic gas. Now, why is that, right? So, um, so with an isothermal gas, you guys probably remember this relationship from general chemistry. If it's isothermal, you can uh, have a relationship where P1, V1 will be equal to P2 times V2. Right, you basically this is your standard Boyle's law relationship. If it's uh, if the temperature is held constant, then you can solve the, the pre initial or final volume or pressure uh, using this expression. However, for an adiabatic uh, process, the equation is a little bit different. P one times V one roughly equals P two times V two. But they're related by this exponential factor, which we use the Greek letter gamma. Uh, so it's raised, the volume is raised to this uh, power gamma. Now gamma is the heat capacity ratio. So gamma is equal to CP over CV, right? So, um, so there, it's similar, right? So you get a very similar relationship, but this adiabatic curve is going to uh, be a little bit more sensitive to these pressure volume changes because of the exponential factor that the volume is raised to. Now, um, the question and what I want to kind of address mostly in this video is where does this equation come from, right? How do we get this? So in order to kind of look at the origins of this equation, we got to start from our first assumption here that this is an adiabatic uh, expansion, right? And start to look at how that affects the equations that we end up with, right? So if we look at the first law of thermodynamics, right? We know that the first law of thermodynamics is du. It's going to be equal to dq plus dw, right? We know that this is our standard uh, equation, differential equation for the first law of thermodynamics. If the uh, expression, if the process that we're looking at is adiabatic, that means that this dq is gone, right? dq is going to be zero if this is adiabatic. So we end up with du just being equal to dw. And since we're looking at a gas volume change, we're going to be looking at PV work. So that's going to be negative PDV. Right. Um, assuming mechanical equilibrium, we don't have to consider P external. Right. So this is just negative P dV. Right. So this gives us one expression for du. Right. Negative P dV. But we also have another expression for du that we can get from the total derivative. Right. We know that the total derivative is going to be equal to CV dt plus du dv at constant t dv, right? This internal pressure term, right? Now, for an ideal gas, we've seen before in, in the last two videos that this ideal, this uh, internal pressure for an ideal gas, that's going to be zero. So that guy's gone. So in the case of an ideal gas, 
we end up with du being equal to CVDT. Okay, so we got two different expressions for du. So that means that we can set these two guys equal to each other, right? So what I'm gonna do is set these two expressions for du equal and then um, and see what we get from there, right? So if we set those guys equal, so I'll use a different color, use this blue. So set du expressions equal. Right, so if we set these two guys equal, we got negative PDV is equal to CVDT, right? Now, we know we have an ideal gas, so, um, well, first, let me back up. We want to solve this differential equation, right? That means we have to integrate on both sides, uh, which means on this left-hand side, we're going to need um, an expression for pressure in terms of volume. Well, since we know we have an ideal gas, we know exactly what the uh, variation of pressure with respect to volume is going to be. It's going to be with respect to nRT over V dV. That's going to be equal to CV dT. Okay, so uh, trying to solve a differential equation um, of this type, all we got to do is integrate both sides. So uh, we want to get the like terms together first. So everything that's with respect to volume, we want to be on the left-hand side. Everything that's with respect to temperature, we want to be on the right-hand side. So let's do that. So um, on the left-hand side, we'll have negative NR over V dV. And on the right-hand side, we'll have CV over T dT. Okay, so now at this point, I'm ready to integrate on both sides in order to solve this uh, equation. So um, if I integrate on the left, I'm gonna be integrating from V2, V1 to V2, right? Looking back at our expansion, right? We're going from uh, initial volume V1 to final volume V2 and an initial temperature T1 to a final temperature T2. So uh, all we have to do is integrate over those initial and final variables in order to solve here. So uh, we know the number of moles is constant. R is also constant. Uh, so all we have to do is integrate from V1 to V2 of one over V dV. And that's going to be equal to, right, on the right-hand side, CV can come out of that integral from T1 to T2 of one over T dT. All right. Okay, so uh, so we have the integrals that we need to solve. So going forward with this, right, all we have to do is just solve these integrals. The integral of 1 over V and 1 over T is just going to be ln uh, V2 over V1 and T2 over T1, respectively. So we end up with negative NR ln V2 over V1 equal to CV ln T2 over T1. Okay, so now what I can do here is exploit uh, the relationship that we have between CP and CV, right? So um, if you don't remember, let me write it here on the side. Make sure if, if you don't remember this, go back and watch that video on the relationship of CP and CV. Right, we had this relationship for an ideal gas where CP is equal to CV plus NR. Right, so if I solve this guy for NR, right, NR is going to be equal to CP minus CV. Okay, so we have NR is equal to CP minus CV. I can plug this guy in here for NR. So let's do that. So if I plug that guy in for NR, then I end up with negative CP minus CV ln V2 over V1, right? That's going to be equal to CV ln T2 over T1, right? Okay, so, um, so what I'm going to do here first is I'm going to get rid of this negative sign just out of convenience. What I can do is flip this uh, LN. So this is a little bit of a math trick. So let me show you guys what I'm going to do here. So this is just a 
math trick. So it's a property of natural log. So if you have the natural log of x over y, that's going to be equal to the negative ln of y over x. So basically, you can flip these guys. As long as you change the sign, then it's going to be valid, right? So I'm going to do that here in order to get rid of that negative sign. So basically, we can rewrite this as CP minus CV ln V1 over V2. Okay, so that gives us CV ln T2 over T1. Okay, so uh, so we're almost home with this derivation. So all we have to do here next, what I'm going to do is divide both sides by CV. So let's divide. If we divide both sides by CV, then we end up with CP minus CV divided by CV ln V1 over V2 equal to ln t2 over t1 right now we actually get the definition here of um, our heat capacity ratio right so let me go back up to the top remind you right this heat capacity ratio right here right this guy cp over cv we've got that in our derivation here right so we can actually rewrite this term as gamma minus one right because you'll have cp over cv minus cv over cv which is one so this is just gamma minus one and this is ln v1 over v2 is equal to ln t2 over t1 okay cool so um using another property of natural logs right so let me write out this natural log property over here as well, right? If we have A ln X, you can rewrite that as ln X to the A power, right? So using that law of natural log here, I'm going to rewrite this guy as ln V1 over V2 raised to the gamma minus one power, right? So that's gonna be equal to ln t2 over t1 okay so uh so now we have this guy right if, if and so this line here where we have the natural log of both this implies that the arguments inside the natural log are equal so if these two are equal then we know that the following must be true right v1 over v2 gamma minus one must be equal to t2 over t1 okay so uh what we can do here uh we know that for an ideal gas right we know that for an ideal gas the temperature is going to be equal to pv over nr so what we're going to do is just plug that guy uh in here so let me I'm gonna plug that guy in here in order to get um, in order to simplify this expression to get pressure and volume rather than volume and temperature right so if we plug in oops so if we plug in PV over NR for both of these guys then we'll have P2 V2 over NR in the numerator and we'll have P1 V1 over NR in the denominator right NR is going to be the same in both cases Right, so V2, gamma minus one. So NR is the same in both cases since these are both constants. So that guy cancels with this guy. So we're left with V1 over V2, gamma minus one. Then this guy will just be P2, V2 over P1, V1, right? So uh, what we can do is split this guy up, right? So, um, so what we can do is uh, you know, multiply on both sides by V1 over V2, right? In order to cancel this guy out. So we'll end up with V1 
v1 over v2 times v1 over v2 to the gamma minus 1. Then we'll have p2 over p1 left on this side, right? Okay, so um, if we uh, multiply these guys together, right? Keep in mind that you're, when you multiply two things together, right? The exponents are going to you know, add together. So basically you'll have this same argument with one plus gamma minus one. So that's just gonna leave you with uh, V1 over V2 to the gamma times P2 over P1, right? And so now we're basically home with this one, right? So now you do the final algebra, that's going to give you P1 V1 gamma times p2 v2 gamma right so this gives you the relationship uh between pressure and volume for an adiabatic expansion of an ideal gas right and we see where it comes from right so it comes from this original uh accounting for the fact that this dq is going to be equal to zero since you have no heat transfer all of this falls from that, right? So this is just showing you how to do this so that you could technically derive the relationship for any uh, other type of gas, right? Um, it doesn't have to necessarily be an ideal gas. If it would be a different type of gas, you could uh, use that to get this same general expression and relationship uh, for pressure and volume in whatever state equation you might be dealing with.